The Ark of the Covenant presents us with one of the greatest mysteries in all of Scripture. In Hebrews chapter 9, we are told that the Ark contained a pot of manna, the two tablets of stone, and Aaron's rod that flowered. These souvenirs were placed inside of the Ark as a reminder of the miracles that God performed for the Israelites in the wilderness. Centuries later, Israel is in a war against the Philistines during the time of Samuel the prophet. Israel loses the battle and about 4,000 men die. In their desperation, Israel moves the Ark of the Covenant from Shiloh and brings it along with them into the battlefields in hopes that its presence would help them defeat the Philistines. The result, however, was even more tragic than the first battle. 1 Samuel chapter 4 So the Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated, and every man fled to his tent. There was a very great slaughter, and there fell of Israel thirty thousand foot soldiers. Also the ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, died. The Israelites would eventually regain possession of the ark, but the ark itself would spend the next several years being moved from city to city with no permanent place to call home. It wasn't until the reign of King Solomon that the ark would eventually find a place to call home. When King Solomon finished building the temple in Jerusalem, he assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel, that they might bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from the city of David, which is Zion. The Ark was brought into the temple, but we are told that Nothing was in the ark except the two tablets of stone which Moses put there at Horeb when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. So what happened to the pot of manna and Aaron's rod? Why weren't they in the ark? The most common and simplest explanation for this mystery is that the pot of manna and Aaron's rod were lost, or better yet, stolen. Remember, the Ark was taken captive by the Philistines, and then it spent several years traveling from city to city. During this time, it would make sense that somebody could have stolen the pot of manna and Aaron's rod. But there's a big problem with that theory. 1 Samuel chapter 6 Then he struck the men of Bet Shemesh because they had looked into the Ark of the Lord. He struck 50,070 men of the people, and the people lamented because the Lord had struck the people with a great slaughter. God killed over 50,000 men of Bet Shemesh for just looking inside the ark. From this scripture alone, we can conclude that the theory of the manna and the rod being stolen just doesn't work. If you have been a subscriber to my channel for a while now, then you'll know that I love to look into these types of mysteries found in the Bible. So let's dive right into this one. The word foreshadowing means to give an indication of what is to come. In the case of the missing pot of manna and Aaron's rod, this is all a foreshadowing of Christ. In Exodus chapter 16, the Israelites are traveling from Elim to the wilderness of Sin. They are hungry, and they begin to complain and ask God for food. God responds by sending them manna. Exodus 16 verse 4, Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people will go out and gather a certain quota every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. In John chapter 6, Jesus was being followed by 5,000 men, not counting women and children. He knows they are hungry from following him, and with just five barley loaves and two small fish, he is able to feed them all, and his disciples are able to gather 12 basketfuls of leftovers. Later in John chapter 6, some of those same people that he fed find him near Capernaum. But they aren't looking for him because they believe in him or the Father who sent him. 
They're looking for him because they're hungry and they want more food, just like the Israelites in the wilderness. Jesus knows this and he tells them, Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What will we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Just like God tested the Israelites in the wilderness to see whether or not they will walk in his law, Jesus is testing this group of people here to see whether or not they will walk with him. However, because of their unbelieving hearts, the people ask Jesus, What sign will you perform then, that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And this is where Christ himself gives us the first answer to the mystery of the ark. Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Why was the pot of manna missing from the ark? This was intentionally done by God to lead us to his Son, who is the true manna from heaven. God tested the Israelites in the wilderness by giving them manna to see whether or not they will walk in his law. And now God also tests us by giving us the true bread from heaven, his son Jesus, to see whether or not we will walk with him. So what about Aaron's rod that flowered? Why did that go missing too? And what about the two tablets of stone? Why were they the only things left in the ark? We will answer all of these questions next time in part two. Until then, Salam.